Good morning. Welcome to Brian 360 and welcome to beautiful Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. I'm here on Friday morning, October 27th, 2023 for Frightmare in the Falls. Now I had gone to a few Comic-Con Fan Expo events earlier this year and Frightmare in the Falls happened to be here today and runs all weekend and I figured why not come to Niagara Falls and see what attractions there are to offer. A place I've been to many times as a kid and as an adult. So I figured let's make a day of it and I'm here a few hours early to wander around. So I'm going to take you on a 360 tour of different places in Niagara Falls and uh, I see some Canadian geese up ahead so that might be interesting if they attack me. Anyway, I'm going to turn the camera around and start chatting as I walk and uh, see if I survive the Canada geese. So the Canada geese are kind of uh, the jerks of the bird world. They like to stop traffic, stand around, and on occasion attack people. We'll see what happens. This could be fun. Oh yeah, and they like to leave lots of poo on the sidewalks. Anyway, Niagara Falls. So I grew up in Toronto and uh, Niagara Falls is about an hour and a half to two hour drive from Toronto. There's the majestic Canada Goose. Lovely. So as a kid, I would come here with my parents. As an adult, I've been here a few times with my wife and kids. And it's just a fun place to visit. So Niagara Falls is kind of like Las Vegas North, if I can call it that. It's not a place you come to for, um, for ballet, for the art galleries, for theater. You come here to have a good time with the falls, which are right ahead of me. Um, they have a midway where I was a ski ball champion. When I was a kid, I should have gone pro. But uh, the museums here are not the typical museums where you might find mummies or dinosaurs or 4,000 year old artifacts. It's where you'll find wax museums and kind of some kitschy things that are fun. And if you're coming here and having a good time, really that's the point. So here are the falls. This is the Niagara River. And off to the left is where all the action happens. I'll get there in a few minutes. So a little bit about the geography of the area. We're lucky in Ontario, Canada, and in the US, uh, New York, uh, Ohio, Michigan, to have the Great Lakes. And the Great Lakes have about 20% of the world's fresh water supply. And all of it eventually comes through here, through Niagara Falls. So the Great Lakes, if you want to remember their names, if you have a test coming up in school, Holmes is the way to remember the Great Lakes. Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. So the water as it's traveling from the west, Lake Superior, is heading east. So it all eventually comes through here as it's traveling through the Great Lakes. Eventually it falls down here, goes out the St. Lawrence River, and off into the Atlantic Ocean. So there's a lot of water that falls through here. Let's go take a look at all the water. So how much water does fall? Well, if you're on the US side of the border, and that's right across from me, you see a building, it says Seneca on the top, Niagara, Seneca something. That's Buffalo, New York. So if you're on the American side and you like the Imperial system, there's about 750,000 gallons of water. If you're on the Canadian side and you like the metric system, that's 2.8 million liters of water that falls every second. That's a lot of water. And you'll see all that water pretty soon. Now, when people visit the Toronto area, they like to visit the CN Tower and Niagara Falls. 
Niagara Falls is a little bit harder to get to given that it's an hour and a half, two hours away. There are bus trips for the day or you can drive. There are several different ways of getting here. Parking's 35 bucks, which I just learned. Oh well, money well spent, I guess. Not sure what this, uh, well, let's go ahead and find out. Well, that's interesting. All right. So anyway, there are ways to get to Niagara Falls that's uh, not so easy um, comparing it to the CN Tower, but it's well worth the trip. Lots of people come here, obviously. Um, people outside of the greater Toronto area, international visitors. When people come from outside of Canada and they're visiting Toronto, they want to see the CN Tower and Niagara Falls. And you'll see why in a minute once I get there. A little bit about the history of the area. So given that uh, there was a country born in 1776, the United States, and they had uh, a bit of a beef with Great Britain, and that beef lasted for a few decades until 1812 when they decided to go to war, 1812 to 1814. Just watching the beautiful majestic Canada geese for a minute. Anyway, um, so 1812, tensions got to the point where war became a reality. And there are lots of areas in the Niagara region where there were battlefields. Uh, there's monuments, places of interest. And uh, maybe at some point I'll come back and do a deeper dive into the War of 1812, given my love of history. And uh, maybe that'll be in some future videos. Great Britain famously burnt down the White House. Sorry about that. Hopefully uh, no hard feelings. But we're all friends now, over 200 years later. So right ahead of me is the bridge to the U.S. There's a few in this area. That is the Rainbow Bridge, if I'm not mistaken. And we're getting close. Let's put, uh, let's do the selfie stick, three meter selfie stick view. Get a little bit closer maybe I will uh, stick the selfie stick over the water It'll be like a trust fall see if I can trust my selfie stick to not break into two and say goodbye to my camera so yeah as I mentioned bus tours plenty of buses will line up and bring thousands of people to Niagara Falls as I said it's October so it's not the peak of tourist season but still it's uh, it's busier than I thought it would be here on a, a Friday morning in October Obviously lots of hotels in this area. It's a good place for hockey tournaments, dance competitions, conventions, bright mare in the falls.
There are lots of ways to see the falls. Obviously, I'm just walking along the side it. But you can take a helicopter ride that will take you over the falls, which is probably the most impressive view. There are a couple of different water options as well. There's the, uh, the Maid of the Mist or the Horn Blower, well, is a, a ferry that will take you down where the falls actually hit. Uh, there is a another ride that goes further up the river and uh, you can experience that before you go off the falls. Lots of people have attempted to go over the Niagara Falls in a barrel, some successfully, some not. They all went over while they walked away, I guess that was the measure of success. that take the tourists closer to the falls. Time to see how well my selfie stick works. Trust fall.
Horseshoe Falls. And that's what that portion of Niagara Falls is called. My heart skipped a little beat every time the wind blew and I thought my selfie stick was going to become airborne.
Well, you get a little bit wet on those boats. They provide you with ponchos. I'm not going to go on the boat because it's just going to be a big wet mess that messes up the lens. It's like constant drizzle here. Straight ahead is the Skylon Tower. That is my first stop. Well, not including this one. Lots of drizzle on the lens. I would wipe it off, but then it's just going to get wet again. Good thing this camera is waterproof.
Now that I'm away from most of the mist, it's probably a good time to wipe off the lens. Alright. Now to get to the Skylon Tower.